Well, thank you all again for joining us for another edition of SpinCast. Joining us today, we have Andy Capone. He is the head varsity football coach at Weddington High School, and they are back-to-back -back state champions. So he is off and running with a phenomenal start there at Weddington. Um, Andy, thank you so much for joining us today, especially under these trying times where everyone's kind of stuck at home. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no worries. Again, I appreciate your time. Uh, for our audience, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started with football in general, how it got to be to the point where now you're a coach here at Weddington, and what got you to this point? Yeah, uh, you know, I started way back in third grade. I was, I was actually originally from Connecticut. I lived there for 11 years. Uh, but, you know, my brother was in fifth grade, I was in third grade, and that's when my parents finally let us play. Uh, ever since then, I fell in love with it. So, um, moved down here. Uh, I went, actually went to Stone Valley High School, uh, middle school and high school, was a quarterback there, team played there for a little bit. Uh, uh, and then, you know, Coach Carson, Tim Carson, who was the defensive coordinator at Sun Valley when I was at Sun Valley, was the head coach at Weddington. Uh, he called and said that there was a, uh, a, a t uh, student teaching, you know, availability for me and hopefully me get hired on after that. And so uh, I took it, uh, you know, moved home, uh, you know, worked under him, which I had known him forever. Uh, got to meet, you know, Claire Lyerly, the softball coach at Weddington, and, and Travis Poole, who's, you know, had a lot of success for Weddington baseball. Uh, you know, I worked really, uh, uh, he was my, my teacher, so, um, you know, so graduated, uh, but my first coaching season, I was, I was actually still uh, in, in college, so I was doing the student teaching and, and you know, first year of coaching, so I uh, graduated in December, got a job at Weddington, uh, been there for seven years total, uh, Coach Carson re retired and moved down to South Carolina uh, a couple years ago, and uh, luckily I was named the head coach, and uh, that's where I'm at now. So, you know, it's been, uh, you know, it's been fast. Uh, you know, I'm 28 years old now, but, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, I've been in it for a while, you know, coaching at, you know, 20, 21 years old. But, uh, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do. And I've always wanted to become a head coach. And, you know, I just got my chance a little bit earlier than some people. But, you know, it's uh, it's very fortunate and a blessing to, to be where I'm at. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, anytime you're able to lead, uh, be the leader of young men and, and kind of frame their framework as they grow, not just through football, but through life. That's, that's a pretty awesome responsibility. So, and not only that, but you've been doing it, I understand for two years and you're off to a phenomenal start with back-to-back -back state championships. So that's uh, that's one way to start, I guess. But let me ask you this, obviously back-to-back -back titles is pretty special, but it's incredibly difficult. What factors do you attribute to the success your program has had under your leadership? Um, you know, I think, you know, like I said, when I got hired, uh, you know, we, we, we were a strong program, uh, you know, just, and, you know, I didn't want to change a lot, but I wanted to, to kind of put my own stamp on it. Um, you know, so most of our staff was, was the same staff as, as been there. And I tried to keep everything, you know, just kind of as similar as it can be, you know, and, and understanding that these are kids. And, you know, I think the biggest thing for me was I had all their support, uh, you know, when I was going through the process. When Coach Carson announced his res resignation, uh, retirement, uh, you know, I had a, all the kids, you know, wanted me to, to apply and kept asking me and hoping I got the job. So, you know, knowing that support and, and uh, most of the assistant coaches also uh, wanted that and, and said, you know, we'll come back if, if you get the job. So, you know, when I got it, uh, like I said, I, I didn't want to change a lot. You know, I think the only thing that we really changed was our helmet colors from green to white. And you know, other than that, you know, and like I said, you, you put your own twist on everything, you know, year by year, you, you kind of tweak and change things for your team. But, you know, the, the, the culture and the, you know, the core beliefs and values of Weddington, were, you know, stayed the same. So I think I was in a unique situation where I didn't have to rebuild. We don't have to do this. You know, we just have to keep, keep the train going. And, and that for me and, and for our staff meant don't change, you know, what doesn't need to be changed and, and, and keep, you know, finding ways to improve, you know, weekly, yearly, and, and uh, you know, just keep it going like that. Yeah. You mentioned a, a key word I hear a lot about in sports in general, which is culture and how you've been able to adapt uh, and keep the culture pretty much the status quo at weddings and just kind of coming in. Coaching and or playing 
alongside a superstar player, not always easy. I know you've got a great team in general, but obviously you've got some special talents on that team as well. From a coach's side, how do you handle that when you've got some a, a pretty special players, players on the team? Obviously, it takes a team to win right. one player. How do you approach that? You know, we expect everything from everybody, you know, and we understand, you know, that, you know, we have some really good players. You know, we got some kids that are going to – that have already went into playing college and some that, you know, can choose from – from a number of colleges, you know, but we, we hold everybody to the same standard, you know, and, and, you know, we, we, we always talk about everybody's got to be all in on, on what Weddington is, you know, and I think, like you said, you know, the culture part of it and all that, you know, but I think them buying into it and, and us just keep driving it in, driving it into their minds that, that goes along and helps, you know, and, uh, you know, we don't, we don't accept anything less from anybody, uh, you know, and, and even if some of these better players, you know, want to, go on to the next level they got to do what we ask them to do and we're hard on them and, and they understand that but I think you know for the most part you know some of our best players have been our hardest workers uh, and, I, and I don't know if there's anything that we've done I think it's how they were born and raised uh, and anytime your best player or best players are your hardest workers you know you feel like you're going to be okay because that's when you you know people are going to follow along suit of those guys and, I, and we've really been fortunate to have that uh, at weddings in the last couple of years. Yeah, no doubt about that. If your best player is doing something pretty special and they're putting in the time and effort, everyone else kind of falls in line. So that's fantastic that you have right. some of those team, uh, some of those players kind of lead that charge for you. That's awesome. Let me ask you a different question. In terms of your job day to day, what do you think is the most difficult aspect of your job today? Obviously, it's not all easy. So there's got to be some things you run across on a day to day basis or uh, from time to time. What would that be most, most challenging, I guess, to you today? Um, you know, you know, normally you talking about in quarantine or out of quarantine, oh, no. normal life, normal, okay, life. normal life, we all have the same answer. <laughs> uh, you know, normal, you know, it's just tr continuing to get people, everybody on board. You know, I don't think it's just a, you know, flip the switch and, and that goes, you know, uh, you know, we, we know that, you know, when people, when you win a lot, people want to join, uh, you know, so there's kids coming in and you, you just got to continue to push every day and, and I think the hardest thing for us as a staff and, and for me is continue to hold that high expectation daily. You know, if you let anything slide for a day or two days or a week, then, you know, then they're expecting you to let it slide, you know, as it goes on. So for us, you know, it, it's a everyday commitment type and, and understanding that these new kids, well, they might help us, but they have to be all the way in. You know, if they're not all the way built in or bought in, you know, then, then we don't want them around, uh, you know, and, and so for us, it's, it's just continuing every day to bring that energy and make sure they bring that energy because, you know, off seasons are, are they get they get long, you know, but, uh, you know, they also are so beneficial for us and which we'd be in the off season right now, you know. So I think that's the thing where, you know, kids don't really see the, you know, the final destination. But for us as coaches, we do. And that's got to be continuing to, to buy in and, and have that, that you know, buy in every day for, for our, our team. Understood. Understood. It's a never-ending process, that's for sure. Uh, never ends. What's the uh, what's the most rewarding part of your job? Would you say? You know, just uh, you know, from a teaching part, it's just you know having kids come back and say how much they miss PE or weightlifting, and having kids sign up over and over because they really enjoyed your class. You know, from uh, and being able to create relationships with kids that you might not have ever created if you weren't a teacher, like you know whether it's somebody from the band or somebody from chorus or theater that has to take PE or decides to take weightlifting and they really love it. Uh, you know, I think creating relationships like that is always fun, you know, and then from the coaching part is, is seeing these kids have success, um, you know, and ultimately reaching their goals, you know, whether it is to play college football, whether it is to play a college sport somewhere else or just go to college and be successful for four years uh, and then, you know, go, you know, go on to the work in force, you know, and some of these guys that I, I was, you know, coaching at a young age, you know, they're all grown and have jobs now and some got married and, you know, for them, it's cool, you know, for them to come back and, and watch us at home on Thanksgiving when we had, you know, 30 or 40, you know, kids that, that have been around the program and the school come back and watch us. Uh, that, that's the most rewarding part and seeing how successful they are and how happy they are to see how successful our program, you know, something that they were a part of continues to become, you know, successful, uh, see their pride in that. Yeah, no doubt about it. Something special about that. Again, leading the young men and seeing them kind of grow into their own and all of a sudden become contributors in their communities is pretty special indeed. I agree with that. 
Well, Coach Capone, as I mentioned at the outset, it's pretty, pretty short, but I appreciate you coming in, taking the time. Obviously, you're touching lives not just in the classroom, but obviously out on the field as well. We wish you the best of luck. You've got a reputation to uphold now. Two in a row, we got to keep it rolling. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks for doing this for, for everybody. I know, I know uh, everybody's been enjoying this. Yeah, it's good. It's tough times for sure. No doubt. No doubt. Stuck at home wondering what to do. So hopefully this gives them just a little bit of a glimpse into a couple of different people, a couple of different programs and kind of how we're all in this together for sure. So again, yes, I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you.